I welcome you all for uh, the series of uh, lecture. We will uh, start uh, module 9 on interferometry. In this uh, module, we will be learning about uh, basics of uh, interferometry. That is, uh, what is uh, the interference phenomena, how it happens, what are the theories of uh, light and uh, how do we obtain the fringes, what are the different uh, shapes of uh, fringes depending upon the type of uh, workpiece and then uh, we will be studying about uh, different uh, types of uh, interferometers and then what are the building blocks of interferometers, what are the different elements by which uh, interferometers are uh, made and what are the various applications of uh, interferometers and what are the various uh, uh, light sources used in the interferometers and then we will uh, move on uh, to the discussion on uh, different uh, uh, types of uh, interferometers like uh, NPL flatness interferometer, Pitter NPL gauge interferometer, laser interferometer and then we will discuss about uh, some of the commercial uh, interferometers. Now uh, let us start uh, module number 9, lecture uh, 1. In this uh, lecture 1, our uh, discussion will be focused on uh, the basics of uh, interfero uh, interferometry. We will study about uh, theories of light and then uh, how the interference phenomena occurs, what are the conditions suitable for uh, the occurrence of uh, interference, what type of uh, uh, fringes we obtain depending upon whether the workpiece is flat or cylindrical or uh, spherical and then we will uh, list uh, some of the uh, available uh, uh, interferometers and then we will study on construction of uh, interferometers what are the various elements elements used to build uh, the interferometers and what are the applications also we will see and what are the sources light sources used in uh, interferometer these things we will uh, discuss in this uh, first lecture now uh, uh, let us start uh, the introduction on uh, the interferometry. Now uh, we will study how uh, what is interference phenomena and how it occurs when uh, two light waves interact with each other. That means uh, we have to consider uh, two light waves, and when they interact with each other, the wave effect leads to a phenomena called interference of uh, light. Instruments designed to measure the interference are known as interferometers. Now what are the applications of uh, the interferometry? Application of interference is uh, of utmost interest in uh, metrology. Interference makes it possible to accurately compare surface uh, geometry with the master. So they are used to compare the surface geometry with the uh, reference uh, surface uh, which is uh, an optical flat is normally used as uh, a reference uh, surface. Microscopic uh, magnification enables micron level resolution and uh, for carrying out inspection or calibration of masters and uh, gauges. Using uh, the interference phenomena, we can uh, calibrate uh, the masters and uh, gauges. Lasers are also increasingly being used in uh, interferometers for uh, precision uh, measurement. That means nowadays laser uh, based uh, interferometers are uh, available 
commercially which are used for metallurgical purposes now what are the theories of uh, light now light is a form of uh, energy it is uh, transferred from the source of light to the eye either by motion of material particles or by means of wave disturbance traveling through a medium now uh, we have uh, two theories of uh, light one is uh, emission theory of light proposed by newton in the year 1675 according to this uh, emission theory a light source continuously emits tiny lightweight uh, particles called uh, corpuscles in all direction you can see here in this diagram we have a light source here which is emitting a tiny lightweight particles in all uh, directions these uh, tiny particles move with the light uh, velocity when uh, these particles fall on the retina they produce uh, the sensation of uh, vision you can see here we have the eye on which uh, these tiny particles uh, fall and then we get the sensation of light now there is another uh, uh, theory called Huygens wave theory proposed by Huygens in uh, 1679 according to this theory each point in a source of light sends out waves you can see here the light moves in the form of uh, a sinusoidal wave like this sends out uh, waves in all directions in hypothetical medium called ether so for the moment of uh, these waves some um, medium is called and ether is assumed to be the medium ether was assumed to be continuous medium which pervades all space the existence of ether was assumed since the propagation of uh, a wave motion requires uh, some sort of uh, medium now uh, you can see a light uh, wave here uh, which is uh, moving in this direction so the distance between this uh, any two consecutive points on this wave is uh, termed as wavelength and it is denoted by lambda and uh, the this height is the amplitude of uh, light now uh, very commonly we use a term called uh, wave friend in the interference phenomena so let us understand what is uh, the wave uh, friend so there are uh, different uh, kinds of uh, wave friends spherical wave friend cylindrical wave friend plane wave friend depending upon the shape now uh, when the light uh, spreads from a point source O, you can see here we have a point source uh, O here, and uh, light is uh, uh, spread in the waveform in all uh, direction. The light waves travel with the same velocity in all directions. All the waves they move uh, at the same uh, speed in all directions, and uh, they arrive simultaneously at all points laying on the sphere having. O as center. If we assume a sphere here with center O with the diameter Ca, then all these waves arrive at this uh, uh, circumference at the same point. So then this uh, front is known as spherical wave front. Now uh, let us assume that the source of light and a form of uh, linear uh, shape o o dash if this is the case then uh, in all isotropic uh, medium wave front takes the cylindrical shape so we get the waves from this source we get the waves from this source and they will be moving in all directions then this uh, front of waves is known as a cylindrical wave front similarly we can uh, assume a point source at an infinite distance if a point or a linear source is placed uh, at infinity 
then the portion of the spherical or cylindrical wave front in a limited region is simply a plane and it is uh, termed as plane wave front. Now uh, let us try to understand Fusion's principle of propagation of uh, wave uh, front. Now uh, each point on the wave front, you can see here we have a point source 4 and we are getting the, the waves, they move like this in all directions with the same velocity. This is the one wave front, this is uh, another wave front and the radius of this wave front is uh, getting changed with uh, time and here we have a uh, wave front uh, a b now each point in the wave front acts as a center of new disturbance now if you keep uh, a screen x y in this uh, path of uh, light with a small hole yes is uh, the pin hole okay so now the light will pass through this uh, pin hole so this becomes this uh, pin hole becomes another source of uh, light and again we get uh, uh, light from this uh, point S yes. and again we get uh, the uh, spherical uh, wave uh, front. Each point on the wave front, now we consider S yes on this a wave front AB, each point on the wave front acts as a center of new disturbance and emits its own set of spherical waves. You can see here, S yes, is the uh, new uh, source of uh, light and uh, we get uh, spherical wave frame from, with this as uh, center. Emits its own set of spherical waves called secondary wavelets. So this AB is the primary uh, wavelet and uh, this uh, CD is a secondary wavelet. These secondary wavelets travel in all directions with the velocity of light so long as they move in the same medium. As long as the medium here and here remains same, these uh, light waves move with the same uh, velocity. The radius of these wavelets increases with uh, time which we can observe here. The radius is changing with uh, time. Now let us try to understand the interference phenomena of uh, light. Now when two light waves superimpose, now we can see here in this diagram we have a source of light, yes is the source of light and we are getting the primary spherical waves and at this point uh, we have uh, a screen, say this is uh, AB. AB is the screen which is having two pinholes S1 and S2. S is the pinhole uh, and uh, this is the source of uh, light. S1, S2, two sufficiently closed closed pinholes or narrow slit. This S1, S2, they can be uh, pinholes or they can be narrow slits. So here from S1 we get uh, 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 secondary wavelets and from S2 also we get uh, secondary wavelets and uh, they are getting superimposed in this uh, region. When two light uh, waves superimpose then the resultant amplitude or intensity in the region of superposition, this is, so this is the region of uh, superposition, the intensity of uh, the re resultant wave is different than the amplitude or intensity of individual uh, waves. This modification in the distribution of intensity in the region of superposition is called interference. Now uh, the primary wavelet from S1 will have some intensity and uh, the secondary a secondary wavelet from S1 and secondary wavelet from S2, they will have certain uh, intensity. When they get uh, superposition, the intensity level changes. So this phenomena is known as interference. When the resultant amplitude is uh, the sum of amplitudes due to the two waves, 
the interference is known as constructive interference and when the resultant amplitude is equal to the difference of two amplitudes then the interference is known as destructive interference now in this uh, diagram we can observe uh, here the light intensity is increasing you can see here uh, we have placed a screen x x here in the path of uh, light so this is uh, screen uh, x x and we can observe intensity distribution of uh, the resultant uh, wave so when uh, the two waves in intensity of two waves get added we get uh, constructive interference and we get a bright uh, region here when the intensity of two waves uh, they get subtracted we get uh, destructive interference and uh, we get a dark band so like this we get uh, uh, a fringe uh, pattern we get uh, bright area followed by dark area followed by bright area like this so we get a pattern of uh, uh, fringes now uh, the constructive interference and uh, destructive interference are detailed here so we have a source of light O. This is the origin O from where we are getting the two waves. A is uh, one uh, light wave, B is another uh, light wave. Since the source is same, they have same uh, wavelength, but amplitudes are different. See, Y A is having uh, an amplitude of uh, uh, A wave A is having an amplitude of y a and wave b is having an amplitude of y b when they combine uh, to increase the if they are phase that means you can see here the starting point uh, is same and they are in phase they are moving uh, on the same side of uh, this reference line we say these two waves a and b are uh, in the uh, phase then the resultant wave r will have an amplitude of y r so this is a constructive interference now we will see the other case wherein the two waves a and b are out of phase by 180 degree even though the, they start at the same uh, point they are out of phase by 180 degree which is it, which is nothing but of uh, a wavelength. So we have the uh, wave A with uh, amplitude uh, y a, and we have uh, wave B, which is out of phase with respect to wave A by 180 degree, and B is having the intensity y B. Now, when they are out of uh, phase, then the intensity of the resultant wave r reduces and the intensity of the resultant wave is y r if y a and y b values are same then amplitude becomes uh, zero that means complete interference occurs and hence we get uh, darkness so that's what we observe here so this is the constructive interference wherein we get uh, bright area and this is uh, the destructive interference where we get uh, uh, dark area because of complete uh, interference. Now let us uh, learn some more things about uh, the fringe uh, formation. Now you can see here uh, we have a screen uh, a b and uh, this is the light uh, source and from here we are getting uh, the light waves so these are uh, uh, primary wavelets from light source uh, l so here we have a pinhole a and pinhole b so from a 
we are getting secondary wavelets from D also we are getting the secondary wavelets at some distance there is a screen which is placed parallel to the screen uh, AB. Now rays uh, A and B from the same source uh, they have the same uh, wavelength at uh, point uh, O1 on the screen the two rays are converged that means the ray from A and ray from B they travel in this uh, media and they are getting combined at point uh, O1. Since A O1 is equal to B O1, the distance A O1 is equal to B O1, the two rays will arrive at O1 in phase and uh, at this point we receive uh, the highest illumination and hence we get a bright uh, spot here. Now let us consider what happens at point O2. At O2, distance A O2 is less than distance B O2 and if B O2 minus A O2 which is nothing but the optical path difference, if this optical path difference is equal to odd number of wavelength that means uh, 2n plus 1 times lambda by 2 then the waves will be 180 degree out of phase and uh, the complete interference occurs and hence we get a dark spot at O2. So here complete interference occurs and we get dark spot. Now let us uh, study what happens at O3. If BO3, this distance BO3 minus AO3 is equal to even number of half wavelength, then the rays are again in phase and point O3 receives a maximum illumination, hence we get a bright uh, spot at point O3. So like this we are getting alternate uh, bright dark, bright spot, dark spot like this. So this happens on both sides of uh, O1. The process repeats uh, both above and below O1 and uh, alternate dark and bright light areas that is fringes are formed on this uh, screen. Now again uh, the fringe formation is uh, shown uh, schematically here. We have uh, a monochromatic light source and then we have a screen with uh, two slits say this is a slit uh, S1 and this is a slit uh, S2 and at some distance we have uh, a screen is uh, placed here and we are getting light waves from uh, secondary wavelets from S1 as well as from S2. Now we can observe here in this region the two secondary wavelets from S2 and S1, they are constructive in nature, hence we are getting a bright uh, spot here. Whereas in this uh, area, the two wavelets from S1 and S2, they are out of uh, phase 1 by 180 degree. So destructive interference uh, happens and we get uh, dark uh, band here. So like this alternate uh, dark and uh, dark band and uh, light band we are getting and, we, and hence we get a, a fringe pattern as shown here. This is the light source and the, the screen with the two slits S1 and S2 and on this screen we are getting the, the fringe pattern. Now uh, let us study about uh, the conditions which are suitable for uh, the interference of uh, light. So when do we get the fringe pattern? What are the conditions uh, suitable for uh, getting uh, the uh, fringes? So that uh, we will study now. Now the separation between the two sources should be small. Now uh, from this diagram we can understand that uh, we have a light source uh, yes from uh, 
which we are getting the primary wavelets and uh, in the screen AB we have uh, two uh, pinholes S1 and S2 separated by a distance uh, 2D. This uh, 2D should be very small. When 2D is small, the fringe width that is uh, d lambda by 2d where uh, d is the distance between uh, screen ab and uh, screen xy and uh, 2d is the distance between s1 and s2 so when the 2d is small the fringe width d lambda by 2d is large and the fringes are separately visible on the other hand, if 2D is large, fringe width will be small and due to the limited resolving power of human height, the fringes will not be separately visible. They will be very close and we will not be able to identify the or we will not be able to count the fringes. Second condition is the distance D between the two sources and the screen should be large that means the distance between the screen AB which contains two slits and the screen uh, XY on which we get the fringe pattern should be large. When D is large fringe width is large and hence they are separately and clearly visible. And the third conditions uh, for the observation of interference is the background should be dark so that we can clearly observe the fringes. The typical values for uh, small d and capital D are shown here. Uh, for 2D should be 0.5 meter, uh, 0.5 millimeter or 1 millimeter or 2 millimeter. So like this uh, the 2D should be very small whereas the capital D should be of the order of uh, 1 meter or 1.5 meter so that we can clearly observe the fringes. Now uh, we can see here uh, the fringe uh, pattern. Now we get uh, the uh, light from the monochromatic uh, source. So part of the light will be reflected from this surface and uh, part of the light is uh, passed through the medium and then again it is uh, reflected from this uh, surface. Now we can uh, have uh, an optical flap for this uh, reference uh, surface and this uh, can be the surface of the work piece uh, whose uh, surface is to be inspected. Now we have to combine the, these two waves and then when we combine uh, we get the interference uh, pattern subjected to this uh, condition. That means the reflected uh, uh, light, say this is a reflected light uh, L1 and this is a reflected light uh, L2. The path difference, there is a path difference uh, between uh, the path length of L1 and L2. The L1 distance is uh, uh, this much whereas the light, reflected light L2 will uh, have an additional length of uh, uh, this. So this is the path uh, difference. If the optical path difference is uh, equal to even number of half wave length that is uh, 2 lambda by 2 or 4 lambda by 2 or 6 lambda by 2 like this, then we get uh, a bright uh, band. So this is the uh, constructive interference uh, between the two uh, wave frames or two waves is uh, constructive in nature and the amplitude will be maximum and we get a very bright uh, spot as shown uh, here. Now at this place, 
So again, uh, say this the uh, so we'll consider at this point. This is uh, the light from the source, and then we get a reflected light. Uh, the light is reflected from this surface, and uh, then uh, the, this is the transmitted transmitted light and then the light is reflected so we get two lights here one l1 and l2 if the optical path difference between uh, these two waves is equal to odd number of of wavelength that is destructive interference uh, happens and then uh, the uh, the amplitudes of the two waves they get subtracted and uh, we get uh, very minimum uh, light intensity at this point and then we get uh, a dark uh, band here. So in between uh, again we have a monochromatic light source and reflected lights. If the path difference between the two wavefronts is uh, equal to even number of, uh, of wavelength then we get a bright uh, spot maximum intensity and bright spot. If the optical path difference is equal to odd number of off wavelength then we get a minimum uh, intensity and the dark uh, band appears. So like this we get uh, a fringe uh, pattern. So this type of fringe pattern we obtain if uh, the surface to be inspected is uh, flat. Now uh, how we can use this phenomena for uh, meteorological uh, application? So the interference of light, uh, uh, using the interference of light, we can always uh, test uh, the surfaces for uh, flatness. Now you can see here, this is uh, the nominally flat surface and uh, this surface we need to inspect whether it is flat or not. For this, so this is the arrangement, we use uh, an optical flat. So the bottom surface of this optical flat is the reference. So this uh, these optical flats, they are discs of uh, stress-free glass or quartz and uh, uh, sometimes both the surfaces are sometimes only one surface which is indicated by the arrow. So this surface uh, are ground, lapped and polished and uh, they are available in different uh, sizes from 25 millimeter diameter up to 300 millimeter uh, diameter. Now, uh, Using this optical flat and monochromatic light source, uh, we can get uh, the fringe pattern and the fringe pattern will tell us about the flatness of uh, the surface which is under uh, test. Now what we have to do is, uh, we have to keep uh, the uh, surface which is to be inspected and on the uh, surface plate and then we have to keep uh, an optical flat of uh, suitable diameter over the surface to be inspected. So normally, the, there will be a small gap uh, between uh, the optical flat and uh, the workpiece under uh, test. At one point, there will be a contact. At another point, there will not be a contact because of uh, maybe uh, the flatness variation. Uh, there will be a small angle between uh, these two surfaces which is indicated by theta. Now you can see here we have a light source, monochromatic uh, light source and we get the light wave. So which is uh, shown here, uh, this S is the light source. So now it will be in the wave form. Uh, now this light will uh, fall on uh, the bottom surface of the optical uh, flat and part of the light is reflected uh, back as shown here and part of the light uh, it will be transmitted. So this is uh, the transmitted uh, light. So this tr light transmitted will fall on uh, the surface to be inspected and then again it is reflected back and it takes uh, this uh, path. Now we have two light uh, waves, these two are combined at the eye. Now, if the optical path difference, you can see here this light 
incident light ray it is falling at point A and from A we have a reflected light and we have another uh, light uh, which will which is part of the light is transmitted and it takes this part A, B, C and then it will combine at the eye. Now between these two light waves there is an optical difference of A, B, C. Okay. Now if this uh, optical path difference is equal to odd number of half wavelength that is uh, 1 lambda by 2 or 3 lambda by 2 or 5 lambda by 2 like that then the complete interference occurs and then a dark band will appear which we can observe here a dark band appears here now we will uh, consider uh, another point uh, wherein uh, again we have a light from a monochromatic uh, source and uh, the light is uh, passed through the optical flat it is uh, reflected from uh, the point D and the reflected light will move in this direction and part of the light is uh, transmitted and it will take this path D E and from E it is reflected and it will take uh, the this path and uh, these two waves are combined here and again if uh, the optical path difference is equal to odd number of half wave length again uh, a dark uh, band will appear here now in between again uh, there will be light source and right light is reflected from this point and uh, light is reflected from uh, this point now let us assume that the optical path difference here is equal to even number of half wave length that is uh, lambda 2, lam 2 lambda by 2 or 4 lambda by 2 or 6 lambda by 2 like that then uh, the uh, intensity intensity of the resultant wave uh, will be maximum and then we get uh, a bright uh, band here so like this we get uh, a fringe uh, pattern so this uh, shows uh, an optical flat uh, and these optical flats are commercially available in different uh, sizes. Now this uh, shows uh, the formation of dark fringe and uh, bright uh, fringe. So this is uh, the work piece uh, to be inspected and this is the uh, surface which is to be inspected for flatness and this is the optical flat and there is a wedge shaped air cushion uh, between uh, the optical flat and uh, the work to be inspected. Now you can see here this is the monochromatic uh, light source and we are getting the incident uh, light ray and then it is getting reflected from this point and it is transmitted and again reflected. So here you can uh, observe the optical path difference between these two, between these two waves if it is equal to uh, odd number of uh, half wavelength then a dark complete interference uh, happens and dark fringe appears and you can observe that in this region the two waves they are uh, out of uh, phase and hence uh, destructive interference uh, happens and at this point again we have the light uh, source uh, reflected light a second reflected light and in this region you can see the two waves they are constructive the interference is constructive in nature and we get uh, a bright uh, fringe the reason is uh, the optical path difference here is equal to even number of of wave length now we must understand that uh, if uh, angle theta increases, that means uh, we have the work uh, piece to be inspected and then we have the optical uh, uh, flat placed on uh, the surface to be inspected and uh, this is the angle uh, theta. If the angle theta increases, fringes are brought closer together say we have for, for this particular value of uh, uh, theta say we get uh, the 
fringes uh, like this. So this is the fringe pattern. If this uh, theta increases, say, so this is uh, theta 1 and now it is uh, theta 2 which is greater than theta 1, then the fringes will move uh, closer together like this. So here you can see here the distance between two fringe is more for this theta 1 when theta is increased beyond uh, which is when theta 2 is greater than theta 1 the distance between uh, the fringe is uh, reduced and if theta is reduced surfaces become nearly parallel and fringe spacing increases now let us consider another uh, case uh, wherein we have uh, theta 3 theta 3 which is uh, smaller than theta 1 that means they are uh, almost parallel then the fringe distance uh, will be large like this fringes move away now what happens if uh, the surface to be inspected and the optical flat surface if uh, they are parallel and there is no uh, um, and the, the surface uh, to be inspected is almost flat then we don't get any fringes so this is the ideal uh, case now these optical flats are uh, uh, manufactured with uh, great uh, care so that uh, we get uh, a very uh, fine and flat uh, surface uh, these uh, optical flats uh, should be handled uh, with uh, care, the wood surface and optical flat surfaces should be cleaned with uh, a soft uh, cloth before uh, they are used. And never, uh, we should never ring two optical flats together. Uh, if we ring them together, then uh, the separation uh, becomes uh, very, very difficult. And uh, the flatness of optical flats will be. Uh, the fraction of uh, a millimeter, no, micrometer, or yeah. Now, uh, let us see how we can uh, check the slip gauge surface for uh, flatness. You can see the slip gauge is placed on uh, the flat surface, and an optical flat is placed over the surface of the slip gauge, which is to be inspected and uh, the complete set that is uh, slip gauge and optical flat is placed in a chamber where we get monochromatic light source. Now we can see the set of uh, slip gauge and the optical flat from the top surface from the top. You can see how when we rotate the optical flat how the fringe pattern changes by rotating the optical flat, we can always uh, uh, make uh, the fringes to be parallel to one edge. And it, when the angle between the surface, what surface and optical flat surface changes, you can see how uh, the number of fringes change or the pitch of uh, fringe uh, changes. Now we can see how uh, the flatness of an anvil surface of a micrometer can be tested by using interferometry. The micrometer is uh, held uh, vertically and on the anvil the optical flat is uh, placed and when the complete set is placed under uh, a source of uh, monochromatic uh, light we can observe uh, the fringe pattern. Now we can see the fringes are almost uh, parallel and they are straight which indicates that uh, the surface of uh, the anvil is uh, flat. Now depending upon uh, the workpiece uh, surface we get uh, different uh, shapes of uh, fringes. So let us assume that uh, the, when the work surface is flat for example the flat surface of a 
slip gauge, then we get uh, the fringe pattern like this. Uh, if uh, the dark band and uh, white uh, band they are parallel to each other, straight uh, fringes we get. When the surface is uh, spherical, when the surface is uh, spherical like this, then we get uh, the fringe pattern like this, concentric circles we get. And when the uh, surface of uh, the what is a cylindrical in nature, then we get uh, the fringe pattern uh, like this. Now, let us start uh, the discussion on uh, various types of interferometers. So, commercially, the following uh, types of interferometers are available. Uh, Michelson interferometer, Diamond Green interferometer, Fabry Perot interferometer, and uh, the interferometers developed by National Physical Laboratory, that is uh, NPL flatness interferometer, which is used to check uh, the flatness of gauge blocks, and then the uh, Pitter NPL gauge uh, interferometer is available, and recently laser based uh, interferometers are also available. Some of these types we will uh, discuss in the next uh, lecture. Now, let us study what are the various uh, elements used in uh, interferometers. Now, we can uh, see here a beam uh, splitter which uh, splits the beam into two parts. You can see here we have a beam splitter here incident uh, beam and then uh, the incident beam is made to fall on uh, the splitter. Part of the incident uh, light is uh, reflected and part of the incident uh, ray, incident light is uh, passed uh, through the beam splitter. Now uh, here we can see a clear glass uh, and the light will uh, easily pass through that and uh, this uh, clear glass plate will not act as a beam uh, splitter and here when uh, the glass plate is uh, coated with uh, silver part of the light is uh, or full, full light is uh, reflected. Now, when the, the glass plate is partially silver, part of the incident ray is uh, reflected and part of it will pass through the glass uh, plate. Now, uh, you can see some of the commercially available uh, beam splitters, a glass plate, which is partially silver and uh, glass cubes are also available. So, incident uh, light is uh, partly allowed to pass and partly reflected. Now, different uh, light sources are used. See, what happens uh, if we use uh, uh, daylight which consists of uh, the different uh, colors. You can see here each color uh, will have a different uh, or a range of uh, wavelength. So, we will not be able to get a very clear uh, fringe. So, monochromatic uh, light source uh, are developed uh, which will have a, a sharp uh, wavelength. Mercury 198, cadmium source, krypton, sodium, helium, gas lasers are uh, developed and these uh, like monochromatic light sources are uh, used in uh, making of uh, interferometers. And different uh, optical lenses are used uh, to manipulate uh, the path of uh, the light. Collimating uh, lenses are used and these lenses are used to produce parallel uh, rays of uh, light. You can see here we have a light source, we get uh, light in this fashion 
and uh, we want to make them parallel. We want to get uh, a parallel beam of light. In such cases, we use uh, collimating uh, lens. And sometimes we have to make uh, the parallel beam of light to fall on a particular point. In such cases, we go for condensing uh, lenses. Now, these lenses gather and concentrate the light in a specified uh, direction. Now, moving uh, a mirror is uh, sometimes used in uh, the fabrication of interferometers and uh, workpiece compartment uh, is uh, very essential uh, wherein we get uh, the monochromatic uh, light source and there is a arrangement to keep uh, the work pieces and optical flats so that we can observe uh, the fringe patterns and uh, a detector is uh, mounted at the appropriate place of the interferometer so that we can uh, observe the fringe pattern and we can count the number of uh, fringes. Computers are used uh, to measure the signal uh, and measure the signal is digitized and sent to the computer for processing of uh, the information. And optical flats are used to have uh, the interference uh, phenomena and fixed mirrors are also used to deviate uh, the light. Scales and gratings are also used for measurement uh, purpose. We can see here a, an optical uh, flat uh, made out of uh, glass or quartz and here you can see an optical uh, bench and we can see the stands for keeping uh, the various uh, elements like uh, mirrors and then uh, light sources, beam uh, deflectors, detectors etc etc. You can see here a lot of uh, arrangement is provided to adjust the orientation of uh, light source or uh, the mirrors or lenses. Screws are provided by operating these screws so we can uh, tilt uh, the mirrors or light sources and we can also adjust the height of uh, mirrors or adjust, uh, adjust the height of light sources etc etc. Now uh, let us uh, conclude the lecture uh, one. In this lecture we discussed about uh, the different uh, theories of light and uh, the phenomenon of interference uh, of light and uh, how do we get the fringe pattern and uh, what is the shape of uh, fringe pattern we get depending upon uh, the type of uh, work piece and then the different we listed uh, the different uh, interferometers uh, like NPL uh, interferometer, laser based interferometers etc. And we also discussed about the various building blocks uh, like, like mirror light sources, lenses, etc., which are used to build uh, the interferometers. And we also discussed about uh, the application of uh, interferometer for flatness testing and what are different light sources used in uh, interferometers. So with this, we will conclude this lecture. We will continue the discussion on interferometry in the next uh, lecture. Thank you.